The complex of monuments near the Danish town of Jelling represents an event of exceptional importance, the beginning of the conversion of the Scandinavian peoples to Christianity. The transition is vividly illustrated by the site's pagan burial mounds, two runic stones, one pagan and the other commemorating the Christianization of the Danes, and finally the church representing the triumph of Christianity. The first wooden church built on the site of the present edifice was the largest of its kind anywhere in Scandinavia. Archaeological evidence suggests that it was built in the second half of the 10th century, during the period around 960, when King Harald Bluetooth Gormson introduced Christianity into Denmark, as he proclaims on the larger of the two runic stones. A large wood-lined tomb from the 10th century and containing important artifacts was an integral feature of the design of this first church. The two rune stones stand just outside the church door. The two runic stones are connected with the burial mounds. The smaller was erected by Gorm, the father of King Harald Bluetooth, as a memorial to his queen, Tyre. On the stone, the name Denmark appears for the first time on Danish soil. The larger stone displays a Nordic dragon on one side, while on the other side the earliest image of Christ in Scandinavia is depicted. The runic text describes how Harald brought Denmark and Norway together and Christianized the Danes. Jelling is the only place in Scandinavia where the grave of a known pagan Viking Age king has been identified with certainty, and the close dating of the Jelling stone with its distinctive lion is very important for studies of Viking art styles. Objects found during the excavations can be seen in the National Museum in Copenhagen. During the Viking Age, people believed in a variety of gods, including Odin and Thor. Odin was the chief of the Nordic gods and determined the declarations of war. People believed that he watched every fight, and the fighter who won was Odin's favorite. Thor, Odin's son, was the god of heaven and master of thunder and lightning. When there was thunder in the air, people attributed it to Thor, driving his wagon. Together with the kings and their armies, the clergy gradually succeeded in converting the Vikings to the new faith. When the royal power and the clergymen joined forces militarily and spiritually, it became a crime to worship the old gods. Those who persisted in the old faith would face punishment or even death. King Gorm was buried as a heathen in the northern mound around the year 950. But later, when his son Harold Bluetooth converted to Christianity, he wanted to give his father a Christian burial in the church he had built next to the mound. When the grave was opened in the 1970s, a great deal of gold threads, which had evidently been woven into a royal costume, were found inside. Pieces of jewelry found inside the grave show its connection to the northern mound. On the big stone which King Bluetooth erected in memory of his parents, it is written, King Harold ordered this monument to be made in memory of Gorm his father and Tyre his mother, the herald who won all Denmark and Norway and Christianized the Danes. Most of the inscription is on the east face, while the remainder of the inscription, relating to the Christianization of the Danes between 953 and 965, is on the southwest face which also bears the depiction of Christ.
On either side of the church stand two enormous mounds. The two flat-topped mounds are almost identical in shape and size, with a diameter of 70 meters and up to 11 meters high. Excavation has revealed that their construction is identical, being built of turf carefully stacked with the grass side down in even layers. The north mound was constructed over an impressive burial chamber of oak, cut into an earlier Bronze Age barrow of much smaller dimensions. The south mound contains no burial chamber. Excavation has revealed that it is built over stone alignment, precisely oriented towards a Bronze Age barrow underlying the north mound. The interior of the church at Yelling is designed in such a way that the floor, windows, benches, and lighting are united in an overall decorative scheme that transmits a feeling of peace and solemnity. A number of old elements from the interior of the church, like the frescoes, were also integrated into the decoration. The chancel was originally home to Denmark's first frescoes, which were clearly inspired by Byzantine art. In the 1920s, the frescoes were restored by Johann Thomas Skovgaard, who painted the murals adorning the southern wall at the same time. The pulpit from 1650 is in the Renaissance style. The floor has been covered with a reddish-colored stone called Tranas, from its place of origin in Sweden. Six figures of the apostles from the 1500s can be seen on the northern wall in the steeple room of the church. The other six apostles disappeared sometime around 1900. The female figure is of St. Catherine, the patron saint of lepers. The organ, with its 16 stops, was built in 1960. The church's organ has added new life to this ancient structure. Denmark officially celebrated the millennium in Yelling on December 3, 2000. For the occasion, the church was reopened after having been extensively redecorated. The event took place at a millennium service, attended by Her Majesty Queen Margaret and Prime Minister Paul Nyrup Masmussen, along with many other government officials. The new decoration covers the church's entire interior. A new floor was laid in red Swedish granite with black decoration, and a silver stripe was added at the side of the tomb of Gorm the Elder. The art of runic sculpture continues to this day, as Scandinavian artists work stones and imitate the oldest inscriptions. Most runic inscriptions are death runes, in other words, memorials commonly referred to as rune stones. It should be noted that casting runes for divining, whether they are made from stone or any other material, are called simply runes, or more correctly, divining runes, but never rune stones. 
Strangely, the coming of Christianity did not completely eliminate the use of runic inscription. It seems the early missionaries were more tolerant of pagan culture than those in the other areas of the north. Some years ago, the Yelling Monuments began to receive greater international recognition, which served to accelerate the plans of building an exhibition center. The building called Royal Yelling was inaugurated in the year 2000. With the help of photos, posters, and models with detailed texts, though information can be had about the monument, its history, along with an attempt to understand its mysteries. The Yelling burial mounds and one of the runic stones are striking examples of pagan Nordic culture, while the other runic stone and the church illustrate the Christianization of the Danish people towards the middle of the 10th century. Together, they form a picture of a culture in the midst of transition, when the ancient pagan religion was replaced by the arrival of the Christian faith. <laughs> 